So what we're doing is a screening process for the quagga mussel and the zebra mussel. They're invasive species that we want to avoid getting in the lake. It's real important. Just one boat that doesn't get checked could be dangerous to the lake. And if you ended up with one breeding pair that started breeding and started to populate, the damage would be done. There is no way known at this point to eradicate them. Quagga mussel breeding pair can have up to a million young a year. So really what we're doing is trying to defend our lakes from any of them coming in. So the first thing we're looking for is, is the boat clean? Are there any pieces of mud, debris, grasses, anything that could hold those mussels that we couldn't see? So we're gonna take a look at this boat and uh, looking at it, it looks like it's pretty clean. There doesn't seem to be anything in here that's uh, hanging from the boat. The next thing we're gonna look at is dry. So if is it got any coating of water on it? And a lot of times there's carpet that can uh, hold water that the boat sits on and there's no, uh, there's no water on the carpet. And the last thing we're gonna look at a boat like this is is it drained? So back here is the drain plug and you can see on this one on this side, the drain plug is out and no water is draining out. So there's no water being captured in this boat and that's the critical thing we're looking for is that clean, drained, and dry. Now the mussels, when they're in their first attachment stage, can be so small, they're like a sandpaper. So what our screeners are gonna do is just run their hand along the boat and see if they feel any of that um, sandpaper-like material. And again, on this one, there's no material. There's nothing in, on this boat that indicates that it's a uh, high-risk vessel. He's brought it to us just like we want to see it, clean, drained, and dry. He's filled out his screening form. And so at this point, we're going to stamp the screening form with the official stamp. We're going to get this gentleman on the lake. I grew up on this lake as a kid. I, I, I want my family and my future generations to be able to use this lake and have this as a resource. And so it's just important that we all do our part to protect it. These are our freshwater mussels and um, you know, what we look for as far as identifying them is that they have stripes on their shells and they have little threads that they use to hold on to surfaces. They're called a bissel thread. So if, if you see something that you've got a question about, if it's striped and it has threads, that's a high risk mussel and that's something you want to bring to a park ranger or to a California Fish and Game Warden or a state park ranger. You want to let somebody know that you found those. But when they're in the larval stage, they're microscopic. So you can have a cup of water that's, that's hidden in your boat that's holding those microscopic larvae, and you don't even know it. So that's why we're really looking for that clean, drained, and dry, that there's no standing water in your boat. To make sure there's no chance of these uh, living to then populate in the lake. And that's why it's so critical. And that's why we keep going back to the public to educate the public and work with our partners, Water Resources, San Luis County, and um, the Ag Department to make sure that everybody understands if you're gonna come out and boat, your boat has to be clean, drained, and dry. If you have any questions or you have any um, hesitation or worry, talk to us. Um, we can give you more information. If you've got concerns about a boat, we, we can educate you on what you need to do to make sure that boat is not harboring those invasive species and is not gonna do dramatic damage to our lakes. This is a statewide or western U.S., I don't know the extent of it problem and I think you're going to run into this everywhere. And I don't think it's not exclusive to this lake and so I think it's just kind of a reality of um, the boating scene anymore when you're going to use these freshwater lakes. And so I think boaters is going to get, you know, get used to it so we're happy, you know, it doesn't bother us one bit. There are lakes in the Colorado River Basin that are infested. This, uh, this infestation started in the Great Lakes here in the United States and has moved west continually. So what we're trying to do is make sure everybody understands that even just one boat that doesn't get checked could be dangerous to the lake. When you go to lakes that are infected, you'll literally see a launch ramp like this, and it'll have an inch, inch and a half 
of dead muscle shells that are razor sharp all the way down because it, you know ours are our irrigation reservoirs. That's what these reservoirs do. And so they're constantly going up and down in, in height. So as they go down, the muscles that are stuck to this material here die. And so literally you, you would see just a sheet of dead muscles that are razor sharp. The smell, the, the, the whole pet picture is just bad. It's bad for the, for the native species. It's bad for um, boaters. It's bad for people who, use, who, who make their money on businesses that are, are supported by, by camping and boating. So it's just bad, and that's why we ask everybody to contribute by making sure before you come out, your boat is clean, drained, and dry. Well, essentially what happens is we do the screening process, and again, we run so many boats through these ramps that, it, that, that what we're looking for is we're trying to call out those high-risk boats. So the boats that are clean, drained, and dry, we want to make this process very, very quick. If you haven't been on an a infected body of water in the last 30 days, it's going to be a very quick process. The boats that have been on an infected body of water or for one or other, other reasons are a high-risk boat, we pull them out, we pull them aside, and we do a full what's called level one inspection. And that means we pull everything out of the boat and we do a full complete inspection to make sure that there's no live mussels in that boat. If we do find live mussels, then at that point that boat's going to be stopped. We're going to work closely with Fish and Game to figure out how we then get that boat um, decontaminated and, and through some sort of quarantine process. We, we really are relying on cooperation and we're really working closely with community groups and the public to say, hey, this is your resource. You know, you can see what it looks like if it gets infected. You can see what that does to docks, to boats. We have a hydroelectric facility that helps fund the, the, the lake operation here. Um, that, that would cost millions of dollars to be maintained in a clean environment. Um, San Luis County pulls water out of uh, Nasameno and again that water draw could be seriously damaged or plugged completely by this kind of mussel um, infestation. So it, you know property owners, lake visitors, everybody has a part to play in using this facility and so everybody has what I call skin in the game to make sure that they are contributing to making sure that it's kept clean and uh, muscle free. Thank you.